lead a double life. By day, I'm a professor. I have a PhD in math. My dissertation was titled Vought's Two Cardinal Theorem and Notions of Minimality in Continuous Logic, which I'm not gonna try to explain to you right now. But by night, I'm a magician. I perform at venues like the Magic Castle, doing sleight of hand. The way I think about math research is very similar to the way I think about magic. They have a lot in common. Math research, like magic, requires a lot of very strange and beautiful creativity. And this is the same approach I take to performing magic, where I want to think outside of reality and how I can share that with my audience. Tonight I have a trick that I spent a lot of time developing just for this show. Penn Teller, this trick has a little bit of math and a whole lot of magic. Please welcome the math magical mind of Tori Nokes. I'm a mathematician. I have a PhD in everything. And whenever I mention what I do for a living, the first thing people always say is, oh, you're really good with numbers. You must spend a lot of time in Vegas. <laughs> nope. Turns out when people find out I'm a card magician, they do the exact same thing. Oh, you're really good with playing cards. You must spend a lot of time in Vegas. <laughs> Still no. One of the reasons I don't spend much time here gambling is, as I'm sure you know, a lot of these games are designed such that the house wins. So this inspired me to use my math and magic skills to design my own Vegas-style game in which the odds are in your favor. And I brought with me for us to play. Rules are simple. Pen, in a moment, I'm going to have you select a card at random. And tell her you were going to have one chance to find the position of that card on this board of 52. Now, I know those odds sound near impossible, but I'll use a little bit of magic to help you guys out. All right, Pen, go ahead and tell me when to stop. Stop. Right there. Did you want one more, one less? One less. OK, all right, so this card right here. OK, let's see how you did. We will not be using any of these. And we will not be using any of these. So our winning card is the four of hearts. Perfect. All right, Teller, you're a player. And I really think you're going to nail this. I, I know you can win. In fact, I created this game so that you could win. OK, so I'm feeling really good. Are you ready? All right. All I need you to do is indicate which row and how many cards over that four of hearts is. Okay, fifth row, sixth card. Okay, so here's the fifth row. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right here. And are you sure? Do you want to change your mind? One more. Okay, so right here. Perfect. Okay. I'm really excited. I really think you nailed it. Okay. All right, Teller's card. Six of spades, really? I thought you were sure. Yeah. All right, well, you know what? That's okay. Because Penn is here, so we can play again. All right, Penn, same deal. Where's the four of hearts? Uh, first card. First card, top left, right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, bold choice. I like it. All right, let's see what you got here. Feeling even better about it this time. Okay. Oh. Jack of Diamonds. You know, this was supposed to be an easy game. This is not going how I planned it at all. <laughs> Allison, hi. Hi. Are you busy right now? No. Do you want to play a game with us? Of course. Great. Before you take your turn, let me just make sure the winning card's actually back here. Uh, yeah. Teller was pretty close. In fact, Penn was a little bit closer. So, Allison, where's the four parts? Second row, third card. Second row, third card. Right here. Yes. OK. Are you feeling lucky? Always. Good. Me too. All right, let's see how you did. All right. Eight of diamonds. Oh. Well, that's it. The game is over. I was really rooting for you guys, too. See, remember when I said that the odds were in your favor? Well, unlike most magicians, I wasn't lying. The odds really were in your favor, and somehow all three of you managed to defy those easy odds. Thing is, other than the three cards that you selected, every other card on this board is a four of hearts. And if you can't figure out how you missed every single time, then the odds are that I fooled you. So I 
get the feeling you don't think like everyone else. I do not, no. <laughs> um, my research is in very abstract math, and that happens in like theoretical space, and it's all made up and imaginary and like requires a lot of creativity. And is it hard to speak with us mere mortals? <laughs> <laughs> no, it turns out I'm also a human being, so. Oh, that's good, yeah. good to know. So thinking the way you do probably helps you create tricks that no one's seen before. Yeah, you know, I mean, I've trained classically in magic and learned all the background, but then, yeah, I like to think outside the box, and sometimes I'll think of something and be like, has someone else done this? Have I seen this? And then like, I'm really excited when the answer is no, and I get to work it out. That's so cool. Are you just a high achiever at everything you do? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a marathoner. I, d I do everything all the way. <laughs> wow. Have you always loved magic? Yeah, as a kid, I was like a science kid. So I was like building rockets and like blowing stuff up and like setting off the school fire alarm. But um, yeah, when I was 22, I, I visited the Magic Castle for the first time and I thought it was so cool. I was like, I want to be part of this. All right, let's see if Penn and Teller calculated how you did your trick. All right. Tori, you've done a card trick plot that we've never seen before. Oh. After eight seasons of Fool Us and actually looking into magic a little bit before that, uh, this is a whole lot uh, different thing. That that reveal with all the uh, force of hearts is is just beautiful. And the idea of giving the edge and all that and the no choice, but you actually have a choice, it's a really good plot. Thank you. And very original. I, Thank I, you. I really loved it. We're trying to figure out how you did it, you know. It's such a, such a great trick. And we uh, went down one road that we had to double back and try to figure out how to go and what, what you were possibly doing here. And what people may not know is if we're right, which we don't know, we don't know if we are, but if we're right, this is surprisingly not the cheapest trick to put together we've ever seen on the show. Costs a little bit of money, but you, uh, you seem unflappable in the whole thing. But it's a complicated trick in terms of plot. It's a beautiful reveal. So I'm actually eager to hear the answer. I tried to drop a few hints there. Um, so you tell us, did you fool us? No, you guys figured it out. Oh, 